Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 385. Today, I'm going to give you a behind-the-scenes look, give you some updates on what's going on with this show, and hopefully you find it interesting. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host. I'm the founder at Whistlekick, and I love martial arts. absolutely love martial arts. I've been doing it all of my life, and that ultimately led to this company and this show, and truly, I feel blessed. I get to talk to you twice a week. And I get to talk to guests. And honestly, it's just made my life better. I'm a very fortunate person. I, I remember that daily. If you want to check out the shows, you can find them at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or find the products that we make at whistlekick.com. If you check out those products, don't forget, use the code PODCAST15. Gets you 15% off. And we've got a lot more than product at whistlekick.com. We've got a lot of projects that we're involved in. And you can check out all of those. Almost everything else is free. So check it out, share it with people, help us help the martial arts. As I was contemplating what to talk about for today's episode, I realized how close we are to episode 400 here, episode 385, you know, 15 more episodes, two a week, you know, we're talking about a couple months until episode 400 airs. And not that there's really anything special in the grand scheme about a hundred level episode. But they're time for me for reflection. What's gone on in the last 100 episodes? For us, 100 episodes is just about a year. And while I have no problem sharing what goes on with this show, I thought that I might, you know, be explicit about that and really tell you what happens behind the scenes and give you some of the updates and compare and contrast early episodes to what's going on now. When I started the show, it was just me. It was me with an idea and a $25 headset And I reached out to a number of friends and said, hey, I want to do this podcast. What do you think? Can you help me out? And they did. And if you take a look, the first five episodes are actually with people that I know very closely who all happen to practice Taekwondo. And that was some of the early feedback that we received was, why are all these people Taekwondo people? Now, of course, if you take a look through what's going on with more recent episodes, you'll see that we've branched out tremendously. We've had folks from all over the world all sorts of styles, ages, experiences. It's really been a very diverse set of people who've come on the show, and I appreciate that. That's always been a goal for the show, and I think that we can say that we're checking that box. Rather than a $25 headset now, I use a pretty high-level microphone, and it's got this big fancy arm that hangs on the back of the desk, and we have a wonderful audio engineer who does so much more than that, so shout out to Julius. I've mentioned him on the show several times. He does an absolutely wonderful job and frees me up to spend time working on other things. And recently, we brought on someone else. So I want to shout out Lessie, who has been helping over the last few weeks to schedule guests. And what I love about that is that it gives a little bit more... How do I want to say it? There's another perspective. It's not just my opinion on who would make a good guest. I've always asked for listeners to submit guest suggestions because... That means it's not just my ideas of who belongs on the show, but it includes all of you. Well, now we've got Leslie offering up her suggestions and helping me get those folks scheduled. And it's freed up some of my time, which makes it much easier for me. Because let's face it, I don't want to have one episode in the can uh, ready to go, so to speak. I like to have, you know, four to six weeks ready to go. And guests seem to come in waves. Sometimes we'll have three or four people schedule within a week, and then it might be three weeks before someone else schedules. And this helps to stabilize things, and it takes some of the stress off me. So I really appreciate it. She's been doing a great job. When I consider early episodes to now, I'm aware that my interview style has changed a little bit, and I'd like to say I've gotten better. Hopefully those of you that have been around a while feel the same way. Not only have I always been working to improve the quality of the show by bringing on the best guests as as possible uh, and improving the audio quality and the show notes. But I personally have tried to get better. I will often reflect back on episodes, consider how I could do things a little bit differently. You know, there's a bit of a martial arts element in there, right? You review what you've done, try to get better. Honestly, I rarely listen to full episodes because... I was there. And to listen to it again means I have to listen to my own voice, which most of us 
know how frustrating and how uh, annoying your own voice on recording often is. The show definitely receives more feedback than it used to, whether it's on YouTube or emails directly to me. My favorite way of, of getting feedback, honestly, is still on the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com because then other people get to read it. And once in a while, we end up with a conversation. Not usually. Uh, honestly, I wish there was more of that. I wish we had more kind of chatter, more back channel sort of conversation. There's some of it that happens at the podcast group. Uh, what is that called? Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes. There's a link from the, the website. I don't know. I, I I wish there was more back and forth among past guests and friends of the show and, and all that. I will say that it is weird to me that I bump into people and they describe themselves as fans of the show. And I'm I'm not sure how to handle that. I I, I don't know. I, people are surprised to learn that I consider myself an introvert. Um you know, I, I live three miles up a dirt road in the woods. There's a reason I chose to live here. I love people. I love martial arts, martial artists, and I love talking about it. But I tend to be a quiet guy when I'm on my own. And to bump into someone who says that they, they enjoy the show and they enjoy what I do, I still haven't fully wrapped my brain around how I'm supposed to respond to that. I say thank you, and then I appreciate it. And that's that's the truth. I do appreciate everyone's time and everyone's support. But I don't know if they're expecting more. I don't know that I can offer more. Hopefully I don't get to the point where people are asking me for autographs. That would be super weird. I don't know that I could handle it. But there are two things that have come out of the show that I am quite proud of. And the first one is that I've heard from multiple people who had trained in the past and taken a break and chose to, at least according to their words, to resume their martial arts training because of this show. I never would have imagined that that would have happened when I started this show, let alone have it happen multiple times. I, I want to say it's, I don't know, I, I get an email like that every few months. So it's been for almost four years. As I'm recording this, it will be four years in a week. And so maybe today is the better time to record this rather than some kind of episode 400 thing. I'm still considering what we'll do for episode 400. It won't be like the last couple of years. I know that. And then the second thing that I'm really proud of are the connections that I've been able to make or provide for other martial artists. The number of friends that I see commenting and on each other's social media posts people that I know met each other because of this show, because of Whistlekick, because of my connections to them. That really makes me happy because I know that the more we're connected to other martial artists, the harder it is to leave martial arts. The more we're going to get out of martial arts, the more we further it. And those are the goals. Those are, have always been the goals of Whistlekick is to advance martial arts. And so I look at a project like Marshall Journal, something that came out of initially my friendship with Sensei Jared Wilson of Marshall Thoughts. I said, you know, we, we've got something here. Let's do something with these friendships, these connections. And over the last year plus, I don't even think it's been a year and a half, we've produced tons of content to the point where, honestly, Marshall Journal has more traffic to the website than Martial Arts Radio. I know the listeners to this show are more passionate, more diehard. You know, I can see that in the numbers because, you know, it's easy to stumble on a web page and not immerse yourself in it. But when you listen to a podcast, you tend to listen to a podcast. And when I look at Whistlekick, when I look at the successes we've had, the challenges, I'll be honest, the failures, the things that have gone well, have not gone well. In every iteration, every possible shift and variant of Whistlekick and what it could look like, it's built around this show. This show is the core to everything that we do. And while it does not drive much in the way of sales, and 
uh, I'll be honest, that's disappointing to me. I had expected that there would be a stronger correlation between this show and selling product. That doesn't mean that it's a failure or it's not worthwhile. This is the single biggest marketing aspect to Whistlekick. It's the single biggest expense for Whistlekick. But it's also the driver of so much of what we do. It forces me to consider martial arts in a way that I wouldn't otherwise. It allows me to connect with people all over the world from all different backgrounds about their martial arts, which in turn reaches others. And it offers the ability. It gives me the platform and the, the at times, the responsibility of chronicling the stories of some of our aging martial artists. We've had two guests pass away. And I look at those episodes and I feel fortunate, blessed that I was able to capture their stories. Now, I'm not the only one that gets to speak with people. But if I fast forward 10, 20 years, if I fast forward beyond my own life, these episodes will be here. These stories from these people will be chronicled. And a lot of the folks that we talk to, these aren't people who are going to make videos of what they've done. Most of them, by definition, are not the best of the best of the best in terms of notoriety or competitive success. Everyone that comes on the show has a story. And those stories tend to be relatable regardless of who they are. So that having the platform to capture those stories for hopefully eternity really means a lot to me. And I get to be along for the ride. I've said often, I'm just a guy who was lucky enough to come up with this idea and put a lot of work into it. Truth be told, anyone could have done this, but I'm the one that did it. And now we see other martial arts podcasts popping up and that makes me really happy. Because I don't pretend that this format or my voice or my interview style are appealing to everyone. Just as I want to see more martial arts television and more martial arts movies and more written content, I want more martial arts podcasts. The more of them out there, the more people will find martial arts podcasts in general. The more people will find martial arts. The more people will stick around with their training. And it'll force me to stay at the top of my game. I want to remain the top martial arts podcast. And I'll work hard to make sure that we do. I like a challenge. And so for those of you who have been listening for a while, I thank you. Those of you that might be newer to the show, I thank you just as much. Because as I've said many, many times, without listeners, I would just be some crazy guy talking to a microphone. So thank you for your time, your support. And if there's something that this show has done for you, let us know. Let us know on social media. We are at Whistlekick all over the place. Let us know at the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. This is episode 385. And if you don't want to share it publicly, you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Thank you for continually giving me the opportunity to speak to you about martial arts because it's made my life so much better. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.